Welcome to the Microfiles. I'm Hamilton Pevick, and here's the latest from the world of mycology. In a recent presentation at the Medicinal Mushroom Symposium, herbalist and author Robert Rogers targets the myceliated grain versus fruit body debate. He spoke specifically about the genus Herisium, also known as lion's mane. Lion's mane is rapidly growing in popularity because of its unique active compounds. These compounds replicate nerve growth factor, prevent and destroy amyloid plaque buildup, and promote neuroplasticity. Basically, it's brain food and only found in one place. The set of active compounds known as Aranaceans are found in higher concentrations in the mycelium. However, the other set of active compounds known as herocenones are found in greater concentrations in the fruit body. Both compounds cross the blood-brain barrier. But once the mycelium produces a fruit body, the Aranaceans leave the mycelium and enter the fruit body. Rogers concluded that both fruit body and mycelium have medicinal efficacy. It appears you can either run the mycelium or grow the fruit body, but you can't have your BRF cake and eat it too. Rogers went on to say that he suspects a blended extract of myceliated grain and fruit body would be ideal for the genus Herisium. This is just one small part of a much wider debate involving all functional mushrooms. Future research will help sort things out not only for the consumer, but for all the mushroom geeks arguing over this. Let's go to the field and check in with our forest correspondent. Thank you. Everything's looking good out there, better than in here. In cultivation news, a 2019 study from Critical Reviews in Biotechnology called a breakthrough in artificial cultivation of Chinese cordyceps on a large scale and its impact on science, the economy, and industry, authored by Zhao Li et Alia, Orpheo cordyceps sinensis, or Yartsa Goomba, or Dong Chang Shi Kao, is often called the most valuable mushroom on the planet. Although the fungus O. sinensis can grow on artificial substrates and the ghost moth has been successfully reared, the large-scale artificial cultivation of Ophiocordyceps sinensis has only recently been accomplished after several decades of efforts and attempts. But are they as potent as the wild-crafted variety? The study states that there was no difference in the chemical components detected between the cultivated and natural cordyceps. However, the artificial cultivation system can be controlled to avoid heavy metal contamination and results in higher quality products. The success of the artificial cultivation of the Ophiocordyceps is clearly a milestone and provides the possibility for research on the in-depth mechanisms of the interaction between the fungus and the host insects and their adaptation to harsh habitats. This cultivation will not only result in a large industry to alleviate the pressure of human demand, but also protect the limited natural resources for sustainable utilization. This new tech has many implications on the locals who depend on O. sinensis as a natural resource. Wildcrafting cordyceps used to make up 26% of the Tibetan Plateau's GDP. However, it is being over-harvested. And with climate change raising the ambient temperature one degree Celsius, the temperature rise is already affecting the economy. The new cultivation tech has a major downside. It takes 500 days to grow a mature fruit body in the lab. For a more in-depth look at the cultural implication of this tech, check out my documentary film, Suklal's Hunt. The link is in the notes. We'll be keeping track on this issue, so stay tuned for updates. Now, let's talk about the weather. I hope it's raining somewhere because it sure isn't raining here. And if it is raining where you are, wait at least a day before you check your spots. And in case you're wondering, yes, lightning strikes help Lentinula idodes flush bigger and more often. In Applied Mycology News, mycelium-based leather is finally hitting the mainstream with Adidas releasing a line of shoes. Adidas has partnered with Bolt Threads to gain access to their trademarked Milo, a mycelium-based fabric that looks and feels like leather. A new startup called MycoCycle is reducing landfill waste by using mycelium to convert waste streams into resource streams. The company claims they can turn your toxic waste into non-toxic reusable materials. This process is called mycoremediation. 
In this sample, MycoCycle's head mycologist Peter McCoy ran oyster mycelium on asphalt material, proving once again that oyster mushrooms will eat anything. It seems applied mycology is going to save us from ourselves. Now, let's take a short break for a message from our sponsor. We'll be back before you can say, fail the Schweinitzi. In other medicinal mushroom news, ABC Channel 10 reports UC San Diego launches a first-of-its-kind human clinical trial. The study is using turkey tail and agaricon to help fight COVID-19. Agaricon, also known as Fomatopsis officinalis, is a rare and precious polypore that grows only on old-growth Douglas firs. Turkey tail, also known as Tremites versicolor, is a widely studied medicinal mushroom with many uses. The principal investigator, Dr. Gordon Sachs, says, We think mushrooms may have the ability to reduce the severity of COVID. Sachs is a preventative and integrative medicine physician who leads the Krupp Center for Integrative Research at UCSD. Paul Stamets is also a collaborator on the study, and he says, In lab tests, Agaricon has shown strong antiviral activity against drug-resistant strains of tuberculosis, along with swine flu, bird flu, cowpox, and herpeviruses. In some experiments, compounds in agaricon were 10 times more potent against flu viruses than the pharmaceutical ribavirin. Dr. Sachs is now recruiting 132 volunteers recently diagnosed with COVID-19 for the double-blind controlled study at UCSD and UCLA. Volunteers will take capsules of mushroom powder or a placebo three times a day for up to two weeks, Participants will be compensated $250, raising the question, is it worth it? Other studies are already in the works. Dr. Sachs is planning to launch a second FDA-authorized study as early as May to explore whether taking mushrooms can stimulate a stronger response to the COVID-19 vaccines. To be fair, the news is not that this is happening, only that it took this long to happen. On the interwebs of online mycology and all things mushrooms, there is no surprise that the internet continues to wonder, is this chaga? And should I boof it? In foraging and wild identification news, for mushroom hunters, the word spring is short for morcella. In the western slope of the Rocky Mountains, don't even bother morel hunting until the narrow-leaf cottonwoods have shown some green and the lilacs are blooming, but only if it rained three days of the week and not on a Thursday. It's a short season, so be ready when the rain comes. MedicalExpress.com reports that Australians are being warned not to pick mushrooms at all because of a bumper flush of Amanita phylloides, also known as the death cap. A good reminder that if you aren't 100% sure of what you have foraged, then don't eat it. It is unfair to say, don't go mushroom hunting because there is one that will kill you. That's like saying, don't swim because someone once drowned in water. Come on, Australia. The stereotype is that everything wants to kill you down there. Don't let mushrooms join the ranks of reasons not to go there. On the other hand, for the experienced Australian mushroom hunters, this is going to be a great year with little competition in popular areas. Good luck out there. If you want to forage, go mushroom hunting with someone who knows how to use an ID book and has some experience, but don't think they will show you their spots. Now it's time for the big score. I'm going to kick off this regular segment by sharing Devika Gurung's photo of this epic burn morale score. You can follow her on Instagram at Himalayan underscore yogini and check out her website at himalayanyogini.com. Full disclosure, she's my wife. Good job, dear. When picking mushrooms in the wild, remember to use sustainable wild harvesting practices. Thank you for joining me in the Mycophiles. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment. Send me your big scores and big scoops in the world of mycology. I'm Hamilton Pevick, singing off. 
Rumpa da 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 da